Now, the serving overseer of the Citadel Global Community Church, Pastor Tunde Bakare, has called on President Bola Tinubu to tackle corruption and initiate a robust economic recovery. During his address on the State of the Nation, he described the ordeal of the suspended Central Bank of Nigeria Governor, Mr. Godwin Emifiele, in the hands of Nigeria's secret police as Tinubu's political vendetta. He also said it is imperative for the government to alleviate the burdens faced by citizens, stressing the importance of upholding the rule of law and confronting historical grievances without exacerbating wounds and pursuing vendettas. He highlighted the need to restore faith in a united Nigeria. And Tunde Bakare urged fellow Nigerians to persistently demand accountability and excellence in governance from their leaders. First and foremost, I'm a stakeholder in this nation because I'm a citizen. And so are other citizens who had gone through all kinds of ups and downs due to the <clears throat> policies of the current government. The one that was very worrisome to me is what I describe as impulse leadership. Just speak now and then try to uh, work out things later. That was what happened with the uh, subsidy issue. Now, we, had nev we have never at any time, including the same Nigeria group that I convened, we had never been in support of subsidy. We wanted it removed, but at the same time, we wanted corruption dealt with. Most of the issues today, even President Bola Tinumbu acknowledged that money had gone into wrong hands and they were just lining up the pockets of a few elites. So if you know these people, go after them and don't punish Nigerians for it. Kill corruption and non-Nigerians. That was the issue there. The same impulse style of leadership occurred with the way rather than going by way of peace and by way of negotiation, well, the Rise News analyst Dayo Shobowale joins us now to discuss the State of the Nation address by Pastor Tunde and claims uh, that Nigeria is regressing forcefully to the bottom on Tinubu's watch. Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome again to good afternoon. News Day. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Okay, so let's talk about this uh, State of the Nation address. I was, you know, I listened to it and there was also a, a, you know, a soft copy that had gone out. And there was a point where Pastor Tunde Bakari asked three questions that I want to put across to you and how you feel the president should handle this situation. He asked, he said, who are the select group of individuals whose deep pockets our national treasury have funneled? He said, who are the smugglers and fraudsters that have been defrauding our nation in the name of subsidy? And lastly, who are the nameless characters that have fed fat at the expense of the, of the poor? Are they all sacred um, cows? Now, knowing fully well that full subsidy is gone and that we're dealing with all of this, and the, the, the battle to face corruption, should this have been top priority for the president at this time, making sure that those people who have benefited from the fuel subsidy being in place should be, uh, should be looked into and probably even recover some of the funds that they might have taken. Are you asking a question or answering it? I'm not, ask, I'm not answering it. I'm asking uh, you the you question. You highlighted three things from what he said. Yes. But he said much more than that. Of course. Get me? Mm -hmm. And let me comment on what he said okay. first. What he said was a step, look, a very good advice to a president. And is in a position to say it. Because he's a member of the same president's party. He contested for the, uh, he considered the primary for the presidential candidate of the party. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, not, it's not very much innocent in laying responsibility at the doorstep of the president. While he has said very, very factual things, and he has highlighted uh, how to soft, sort out the problem, which was the, the three points you pointed out. He has highlighted them. You see, our people have always said that, that if the president was brave enough, was realistic 
on fighting corruption. Those are the things you should do. We know the people who are involved in the foil subsidy something. We know the people who have been uh, hijacking the economy since and making Nigerians to live uh, 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 in poverty. But my own take on this is that all what he has said, the president should listen and, if possible, adopt them. I will call them his own salmon from the mouth. He won't, he, he, won't, he won't be the first person to say all this. Obasan just said as much. And some people were saying Obasan just too was part of the problem. Yeah. But uh, listen to the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. All what he said is in the best interest of this government to listen to it. My own take is this. Because people will say uh, somebody is corrupt, somebody is these people are in the National Assembly. We are all Nigerians. We elected these people into power with our eyes wide open. They say people deserve the government it has. There's something called Obessian theory, which Socrates, Socrates is the old philosopher, when he was sentenced to death to poison himself, some people asked him to run away. He said no. The citizen of Athens is bound by the laws of Athens. He will obey the laws of Athens. The Obesian theory is a social contract. Uh, we all voted these people in. It's a social contract. And if they do not perform the way we are doing, we have an obligation not to vote them in again. Or to find a way of correcting the democratic deficit. Because it is a deficit. If people vote you in on some promises and you do not fulfill those promises, they have the right to deny you their support. That is what democracy is all about. And that is what is happening uh, in places where you have coups, like in Niger. You see, the, 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 the uh, head of the coup plotters is saying some things that we have not known before. And some facts are coming, coming out now. But you see, uh, we say the fashionable thing, the fashionable ideology is uh, democracy. But democracy should put food on the table for people. Communist China, Russia, the, they, are not past, you know, they are not practicing this false deposit democracy. See, America, America is divided, say, we now take so, that's what you are doing. You have 51, 49. And then that 51 does as if it is 100%. You get me? That is majority power. So the problem, I will not say it will never solve, but I'm telling you, there is need to appraise the way we choose our leaders in elections. And before we can say you are looking for an El Dorado or an utopia, we are democracy, we put bread on the table. Duly noted, Mr. Shawali. Right. You said there's need for us to appraise uh, our leaders, the way we elect them and whatnot. I hope I'm not misquoting you. But at the moment, this is a government that's been in, um, in office for barely three months. Yes. And from the excerpt of what Pastor Bakari said, he says that um, this is, we're, we're sliding towards a dictatorship. And um, basically, this is the Emilio Khan um, bit is an indicator of tendency for authoritarianism. Yeah, can I comment on that? That's exactly what I'd like Beautiful. you to comment um, on. We are not sliding into a dictatorship. This is a new government. We were in a dictatorship for eight years. You get me? And the person who was president then, Bakari would have been his vice president in his first term. So Bakari cannot behave like Pontius Pilate, washing his hands of the problem. He is part of the political class. He contested. But you see, you know what I thought you people would be asking me about? This is a very fairly rule of law thing. No, you have not mentioned sure. that. Have you are minutes. talking theories to me. No, <laughs> we still have five Since minutes. you're, uh -huh. you're keen on that, yes. would you like to comment? Is this a case of yes. political vendetta? Well, that's what you called it. Do you well, agree? I don't have to agree. Let me say my own mind. You get me? It's a matter of the rule of law. What he's saying is that the man should be taken to court. If, and not only uh, Mephiele, and uh, the EFF's, EFCC boss. Mm -hmm. Yes. But look at the two and look at him too. He is a pastor, he is a lawyer, he is a politician. 
Get me? There are people we call liberation theologian in Latin America. Those who try to free the poor, make sermons like he's doing. No, I don't know why people call it the state of the nation. It's not, it's not head of state. You get me? But then, what he has said, they are pertinent, and there are things the government should look into. And then maybe what, what I can add is that in the case of this, this fuel subsidy remover, this government must intervene. Because there are rumors going around, people are saying the thing is sliding, the price of fuel will slide to 1,000. God forbid. God forbid. In any economy, yeah, they do. even now with new technology, all over in Europe, in America, we have, we have the, uh, the talk of human rights. They are trying to regulate even the internet. To regulate, uh, they are trying to put bills into place for the safety of children who go online. Mm. Bills into place to contain big tech companies, you know, who are manipulate and influence elections and influence uh, 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 peddlers and influence sellers. So, we are at a crossroad. What the man has said, even though uh, I think it's part of the problem, as much, although it's as preferred solution, mm -hmm. as preferred solution. See, I would have added one thing, but I will still add it. You see, the vice president, when they were campaigning, came to give a lecture to write a discourse. And I asked him a question. I said, you see, colonialists uh, for, um, for, uh, for, uh, uh, made our people to suffer. But we've gone. We've got independence. But now we are under the colonialism of the political elite. It's very much a part of the political elite. Oh, very well said, um, yeah. arising journalist, Mr. Okay. Daishibali. It's been a pleasure having you here on Newsday. Thank you for your time, as always. A pleasure.